What is up, Kratics? In this video, we'll be testing and reviewing the three new weapons in the Contract DLC. Those three are the Stun Gun, the EMP Launcher, and the Heavy Rifle. So to acquire these three guns, you need to access the Armory in an Agency. You can either use your own Armory in your Agency, or you can use a friend's Armory in their Agency to do so if you do not own an Agency. So first, we're going to start off with the Stun Gun. The gun costs 330,000 in game. It of course does what you expect it to and stun players for a short amount of time. And that time is about 6 seconds. However, the gun takes about 12 seconds to recharge, which is way too long. Definitely the biggest downfall of this weapon. And if you're wondering about the reload spam trick a lot of players use by switching to a different weapon, that does not work on this gun. In terms of firing distance, based on our testing using the blue lights at the airport, we found it's approximately one blue light spacing, or if you want to compare it to a vehicle, a little bit less of the length of an airport bus. So the firing distance is pretty bad, and another big downfall of this weapon. Now in terms of shooting at players that are in vehicles, you cannot shoot people out of their vehicles normally. However, if their windows are broken or down, you can, in fact, stun them, and their character just kind of falls and jumps out of the car, which is kind of funny. Also, you can, in fact, stun players that are on an Oppressor Mark II, and they will fall off, but keep in mind that firing distance that's less of a length of an airport bus, it's not really all that practical and useful unless they're, like, right there in front of you. Now if we compare the stun gun to another weapon, I think the up and atomizer is the most comparable and honestly it's a lot better in almost every way. Now I will say that the stun gun can in fact bring someone down who's using ballistic equipment temporarily, but the up and atomizer doesn't affect a person using ballistic equipment, they just kind of lose a little health. So there's definitely some positives to the stun gun and a few negatives, but <laughs> In most situations, the up and atomizer is a lot better of an option. The next weapon is the EMP launcher. This one costs about 462,000. It basically does what the EMP mines did from the Arena War update, but now it's in the form of a weapon that is extremely, extremely similar to the compact grenade launcher. Basically what it does is temporarily disable the engine of vehicles, now it does cause some damage to players as well, but it's barely anything, it's obviously intended more for temporarily disabling vehicles. For most normal cars, it disables them for about 8 seconds, which isn't too bad. It gives you some time to either kill them after you disable them, or whatever you want to do in that situation. Now if we see how it does against a tank like the Kanjali for example, again it does disable the engine of the tank. However, it does not disable the cannon, so the person of the tank can keep spamming that cannon over and over while their engine is down to kill you, which really kind of negates the purpose, so definitely not the weapon you want to use against a tank. Now for aircrafts, if we use the buzzard for example, it does in fact disable the engine for about 11 seconds, but because of how hard it is to hit aircrafts and how close they have to be, it's honestly not that useful in these types of situations. It's basically like trying to shoot an aircraft with a compact grenade launcher. It's really not that ideal. Now, for the comparison everyone wants to know, how does it do against an Oppressor Mark II? Well, firstly, again, as I said, it is extremely difficult to hit any aircraft with the EMP launcher, and the Mark II is even more difficult because it's a smaller object and a quicker and more agile moving object. But if you end up getting that extremely lucky shot, the oppressor will be temporarily disabled. However, it's not really that satisfying because the player will land safely on the ground without falling off. This completely defeats the purpose of trying to hit them with his gun. <laughs> not really all that great. Also, its firing distance isn't all that great either, again, very similar to the compact grenade launcher. Now, there are some situations where the EMP launcher might be useful, like a mission or something of those sorts, but in most situations, the EMP launcher is honestly a big letdown and not what the community expected. 
And lastly, we have the Heavy Rifle. So this one costs 450000 and we're going to be comparing it to arguably the best rifle currently in game, which is the Special Carbine Mark II. We're going to be using two controlled variables here, two high-level players with max stats, one with full health, and the other with full health and full armor. We will be testing how many rounds each gun takes to kill the player, and how long it takes in terms of time to kill the player in a separate test as well. And don't worry, I will show a chart with all the data after we're done with this test. So firstly, we're going to do some tests with the Special Carbine Mark II. Again, this is a player with full health, and we're going to be testing how many rounds it takes to kill them. The round counter is at the top right corner of the screen for those of you who don't know. Alright, so 11 rounds to kill a player with full health. Now we're going to try full health and full armor. And it takes 13 rounds to kill the player with full health and full armor. So now that we know the exact amount of rounds, let's see how long it takes to kill a player with the Special Carbine Mark II. So in terms of time, it takes about 1.32 seconds to kill a player with full health. Next up is full health and full armor. And it takes about 1.44 seconds to kill a player with full health and full armor. Now let's compare it to the brand new heavy rifle in terms of rounds. So 10 rounds to kill a player with full health as you just saw. and 13 rounds to kill a player with full health and armor. Now we'll compare in terms of time, how long it takes to kill a player with the heavy rifle. So in terms of time, it takes about 1.22 seconds to kill a player with full health. Next up is full health and full armor. And it takes about 1.48 seconds to kill a player with full health and armor. And as promised, here is all the data in a chart to make it easier to compare. Again, this is from my own testing, which may vary from player to player depending on frame rate, lag, etc. Interpret this data as you wish, but do keep in mind that the Special Carbine Mark II is a lot more accurate with less recoil. So in most situations, it's the Mark II that's the better overall rifle. Plus, all the rifles in GTA pretty much have the same range, so damage and time it takes to kill the player are the main things you want to focus on. Maybe if we get a Mark II variant of the heavy rifle in the future, it might be the new king, but for now, the king of the rifles is still the special carbine Mark II. So that's the testing for the three new weapons. Overall, they aren't really all that great if I'm being honest. I'd say the EMP launcher is probably the worst out of the three. And honestly, the heavy rifle, it's a pretty cool weapon, but you don't really need it if you already have the special carbine Mark II. The only one that's sort of worth it to me is the stun gun because it does have some uses, but again, the poor range and the recharge time of 12 seconds really makes it suffer and it's definitely something you have to consider because it's really only useful in very specific situations. Anyways guys, hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.